Hi, I'm Bruce, and today we're going to show you how to wet pack uh, for column chromatography. When you're ready to start, um, you want to grab your column and then use a small cotton plug uh, to actually pack the column. You pull vacuum with the tube and then you slide this on the bottom of your column. And then you just kind of tap it into place until the plug is now located in the bottom of the column. Now the order for packing a column is usually your cotton plug and then some of your normal phase solvent. So in this case we're going to use the weak solvent which is usually uh, nonpolar. Uh, in this case it's going to be hexane. So uh, with a funnel, go ahead and transfer 25 to 30 milliliters in this case into the bottom of the column just so that it covers the bottom. Go ahead and add a little sand to it. And this will make a nice flat bed for your silica gel. Now I usually keep wash bottles of solvents in my hood to rinse everything down. So just tap it slightly and you just want to make sure the, the sand is level on the bottom. So in order to do a wet pack on silica gel, you're going to add some solvent, in this case hexane, to the silica gel. And the goal here is to make sure that the silica gel and the solvent are free flowing. And once you're ready to load, go ahead and put your funnel on top and then make sure everything is suspended by swirling it and then slowly pour it into your into your column. You can run a gravity column but most people don't have time for that so a good way to speed up your column chromatography is to actually put an airline on the top of your column. Once you're ready to pack your column you're going to take your pump adapter and place it on top and then make sure you use a Keck clip to secure it. Open up your bleeder and then turn on your air pressure at your hood. Make sure the bottom of your column is open and free flowing before you start. So with one hand on top of the column and then one finger over the, over the bleed, you can actually increase the pressure and then release it if it gets too strong. Now one thing you want to watch for is where your silica gel level starts to collect. You want to go ahead and make sure the solvent level is very near to the top of the silica gel or at the top of the silica gel. And it's at this point you want to stop. So when you're ready to load your sample, go ahead and take a pipette and pull up an amount and then get close to the top of the column so you don't drip anywhere. Insert the pipette all the way into the bottom and then very slowly go around the inside of the glass while you add your material. And the idea is to make a nice ring on top of your silica gel without disturbing the bed that you took so much care to create. Once that material is on the column, go ahead and open the bottom stopcock to allow the excess solvent to drip through. And if it's a lot of volume of solvent, you can actually assist that with more air pressure. The idea here is to just get the solvent level to go to the top of the silica gel, not to push it to dryness. Just like that. So you can see now the top of the silica gel doesn't have any solvent, but everything is now on the uh, silica gel and not just uh, free floating in solution. Now in order to make sure you don't disturb your silica bed, you want to go ahead and get a funnel and then take more sand and sprinkle it on top of your silica gel bed just dry. Anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch is usually sufficient for a column this size. And then at this point you're ready to load more solvent on to actually begin running your column. So when you're ready, go ahead and add your solvent to the top. And you can see the sand starts to get wet as the air comes out of what you've packed. So now that we have sufficient or some solvent on top to go ahead and run our column, just remove the funnel and then re-secure your airline. And at this point, you're ready to begin.